Good evening, y'all. Welcome. My name is Cher Musico, and I'm the technical director and gallery manager here in the visual arts department. Thank you for coming to the 18th biennial Joyce Elaine Grant exhibition. I'm going to hand this over to Meg Griffin, who is our professor of photography. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, wow. So many people. I'm so excited that you're here and you braved this crazy weather. Um, but before we begin, I have to, um, before I introduce Shanna, our esteemed juror, I want to share a bit about the exhibition. Um, so it was established in 2001 and organized by the graduate students at TWU. The Joyce Lane Grant Exhibition provides national venue for the exhibition of artistic expression as seen through the eye of the camera. Each year, a distinguished female curator serves a juror for, as juror for the exhibition and selects images from entries submitted by photographers throughout the United States. Um, the juror selects a group show, which you see before you tonight. Um, and also awards a solo show award as well as other prizes. And we'll do that at some point later tonight. <gasps> Come right in, yeah. Um, so the exhibition and endowment were established by alumni Christine Shank, who is now at RIT, I think she's the dean. And a small group of graduate students um, named this in memory of Professor Susan K. Grant's mother. So that's why it's Joyce Elaine Grant. Um, and so uh, the money that is generated by entries goes towards a scholarship for photography students here at TW. So it's a really, really great thing. Um, so it takes a village, and so I have to obviously thank a bunch of people um, for this show happening um, tonight. Um, so thank you to all the graduate students in creative photography class, um, Carla, Izzy, Kelly, Ali, Suzanne, Megan, and Hannah. Thank you for all your hard work. It's such a big deal. This is quite a feat. Um, to Susan K. Grant, who texted me earlier to say that she could not come from Dallas because of this crazy weather. Um, but she's a professor um, emerita, uh, 35 years working um, before me as my predecessor in the photography department. And this show would not exist without her, literally. <laughs> so thank you to Susan. I just have a few, I have a few more to thank. Um, to share Musico, our technical director, and her team of GAs, Caitlin and Kat, for all the hard work. I mean, just look at these labels. They are so organized. Um, just notice those when you walk around. Um, to Kai Peter Martin um, for your precise work hanging this show. It's a big deal. And to Julie Liversat for moral support in hanging the show as well. Also, want to thank all my colleagues um, for their continued support and also um, the division head, Colby Parsons, for championing the show. I mean, there's only so many slots in an exhibition year that you can put things on, and so it's really great that everyone supports it um, all this much time later. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors, Red River Paper, Frame Destination, Photographique, and Garland Camera for your awards that will go to our um, prize winners. And to Anna. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to have you here. Um, uh, the 17th biennial uh, JEG Solo Show Award winner, um, who uh, Lisa Sutcliffe, who is now at the Met. Um, she's an associate curator of photography. Associate? Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm always just upping everybody's. <laughs> um, but uh, so we're so excited. And please do go take a look at her work in the other gallery. So we're honored tonight to have Shana Lopish, as I think I said that right, um, here tonight. She is an assistant curator of photography at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. She has organized exhibitions on cyanotypes, the 1906 earthquake, Ajay Wright Morris, Aiko Jose, Osai, um, and she is, um, she is the co-curator of Constellations, Photographs and Dialogue, which pairs recent acquisitions with existing work from the collection and a living for us all, artists and the WPA. Most recently, she organized Sightlines, Photographs from the Collection on View Now. Over the past 14 years, she has gained curatorial experience at the Center for Creative Photography in Tucson, Arizona and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Oh my gosh, and thank you so much for talking to the students today. It was so inspiring. Um, so uh, thank you to everyone, but here's a round of applause for Shanna, and she'll talk a little bit.
Okay. Um, am I, can you hear me? Is it too loud? Um, so first of all, I just want to say thank you. I'll move away. Um, thank you. Thank you, Megan, for having me here. Thank you. Everybody share, Ali, all the people who brought me to Denton. It's my first time here. Um, I almost did not arrive. The steering wheel on my airplane was broken. Thankfully, we learned this um, as we were taxiing out of San Francisco. Got a new plane. I'm really happy we did not learn it upon arrival. So I got here last night, and I was just wowed uh, today after meeting with graduate students and meeting with Megan's students. Um, I just want to say, sometimes you meet with students and they're, they're, they're feeling you know, a little uh, insecure. Maybe they don't know how to ask questions or don't feel like they're in a good place to. The students I met with today participated and were engaged and were so fun and interested and it just made me so excited for the field right and like looking forward and thinking about where people are going um, so thank you for participating for those who are here and just please tell your students who aren't here thank you um, but this oh god I can hear myself Ugh. okay <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to giving talks with microphones um, but I will proceed um, so when I was asked to look at the selection of works, I was just given images and first name and last initial. So that was how I was basing my choice, like that's what I was basing my choices on. And so this wasn't quick. Um, I looked at the images closely. I would make selections, put it aside, come back to it a few days later, and think about what had really gotten me and what I was still thinking about. May I ask, are there any artists present here? Um, that are up right now. Yay! Um, so, so you're not surprised. I might ask you if you'd like to talk for a minute or two about the work that's on view. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay too. But um, since I haven't done a studio visit with you, you know, it would be really nice for me also to hear about your work. But I understand if that's not okay. Um, so when I received these works, I was just floored by their quality. Um, it was hard to make choices, but in some ways, uh, you know, I looked back at them again yesterday, all the 660 uh, photographs that were on that could have been chosen, and I think I chose, I think I chose well, actually. These look beautiful, and um, when I look at them all together, they make me think about home very loosely, uh, thinking about what makes a place home. Is it a place? Is it a house? Is it a person? Is it a community, a culture, a child, a, um, a mother, a, um, or friends? And to me, the idea of home has changed a lot. I'm from San Francisco. San Francisco has always been my home, but my home also is where my loves are, where my, my two kids are, where my uh, husband is, and wherever I go, that's where my home is. And I felt that here. I felt people examining what it means to belong to a home or to have a home and to decide if um, they should let in more to create a home. And so I'll just go around unless there's any questions. No? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of these, um, but please feel free to interrupt, to raise your hand, and like engage. I don't need to, no one wants to hear me talk for a full half hour by myself. I would love to hear you uh, as well. Um, so Lacey's work really struck me, and I hope that you go close to actually look at what's happening in her work. Um, so these, this is from a series called Offset. Um, and I hope I'm getting this right, uh, since we haven't done a studio visit together, but it's all about the real and the artificial and thinking about, uh, I think she works with movies and goes on location and thinks about um, how in movies we make things look so real, but this is a uh, plastic foliage that's staple gun to the outside of this window, right? Um, I just, and this is just this beautiful light coming out that I thought mimicked the light that you have here. And so, again, I was looking both for formal um, elements, but not just pretty pictures, pictures that made me come back, right? Pictures that made me come back for more. And that's how, in general, I, 
I look at photographs or how I choose photographs. They're pictures that stay with me, right? I have a really good visual memory. That's what also a curator does. Is like I can I have like a Rolodex in my head of all the images that have like moved me in some way. And all of these pictures here moved me, right? I remember them all. Um, and so, you know, I like thinking about the theater of photography um, and how how we make a place look like home. And so for this, she's looking at a set where they're trying to make a home. Um, this next group of work, this constellation, if you will, um, is by Andre Ramos Woodard. Um, I believe they're now uh, living in Houston, um, directing the Houston Center for Photography. I may be incorrect in saying that, but I'm pretty sure they're now the director. Um, so they usually or have made work about blackness, queerness, um, and this work when I saw this in the submissions just um, my jaw dropped, right? Like rarely do I see something. This, of course they were all separate, but I thought about how they moved together, how there was this thread of gold and yellow and thinking about the history of, of those colors in art and what we think about um, when we see those colors. But I think this work is from um, a series called Black Snafu. Um, and I don't know about you, but you can't help uh, but remember it, right? The framing, the whole presentation. Um, and there's something to be said about mixing black and white and chromogenic prints together in different scales um, here. And there's also layering that happens that makes me think about uh, memory and history, right? When you have um, uh, memories aren't just this chronological progression. They're about, there are these many different constellation of layers, right, that float around. And sometimes uh, vision is blocked and maybe you're only, you can only remember a part um, of what happened. But I think for um, Ramos Woodward, this is just, uh, I can't wait to see what he does or what they do with the space that, that you currently have. Any questions? Oh, okay. Um, let's go to Ania Musawel. And I should also say, I normally, I don't usually speak off the cuff like this for <laughs> like a half hour at all. Um, this is, uh, you know, when I do an exhibition, I've been researching an artist's body of work for like two, two years three years maybe. So I have like a good sense if anyone would ask me any question, I would be prepared. Um, and so these artists, they, they got my attention, they drew me in, but I may not know as much about them, but I can speak to um, what they're doing is important. And I can feel that and I hope you can too. Um, so Ania's work, I believe it's about her uh, Cuban Lebanese heritage um, and thinking about her own maternal and paternal grandmothers. And so you can see the generations that are together. And like this is working in a tradition. You think about um, Luis Carlos Bernal uh, shooting people, uh, photographing people in the barrio of Tucson and thinking about um, the, the family home, right? And so in here, what I love seeing is the home behind. Um, I think those are really important. And like, it's not even the people that are interesting, it's the environment to me. Um, it feels so warm. And this just reminds me of my grandmother when she was alive. She would like sit in her like plastic covered chair and you know, uh, it, was just, it was just so funny. Like everything was always covered with plastic. And I was like, I didn't get it, but I kind of do now that she's gone. She just really wanted to keep life pristine, uh, even though life gets really messy sometimes. Amy, hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry to just throw you in the limelight. Everyone wave at Amy and say, hello. Your photograph is fantastic. And I'm sorry to, that we haven't done a studio visit together. So I would, was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about this, if, you're, if you feel comfortable. Very shortly. Yes, yes. Um, Do you want this? Oh. Uh -huh. No, I know it feels a little awkward, right? 
Hello, everyone. Um, this piece is uh, called Petro Club, and it's from a series that is called Wolf Camp Catalog. And um, I'm currently working in Odessa, Texas, where there's a lot of drilling. It's an oil area. So, and the Wolf Camp is the geological shale where all the drilling is happening right now. So, um, this piece is called the P Petro Club. So the image, inside the image, was photographed at the Petroleum Club of Midland. I was actually like doing this event, um, photographing this event, and there was a, they had some very interesting interiors there. Um, and it was all built with that very veneered wood, and that was very memorable for me. This, so yeah, so this was the veneered wood. Right, so then I kind of wanted to take that out of the image and kind of do a little bit of a um, play on that. And then part of the idea of this body of work is, again, since we're, um, there are subterranean activities and above the ground activities, and um, it's a very interesting area. So I wanted, I was looking into what's on the surface, what's underground, and that also sort of connects to our conscious and subconscious in thinking about oil democracy and economy. So that's, it's, it's that kind of project, and it's one image from um, a much larger body of work. Um, and I only have three large, they're mostly very small, the images are, but this one is a larger um, print image, so. And thank you very much for, where's, I brought, um, if you want to flip through, I brought um, just the catalog, so you can, can you, essay. will you actually say why you named the series? Uh, is that? Oh, the Wolf Camp catalog? Yeah, sorry. Oh. That, I, I was reading about that and I'd love for you to. Let me see. Yes, because, um, so it's a catalog and um, I have, I'm very interested in how photographs are distributed, how they circulate, how we experience photography. And so, of course, we have a lot of images in the frame, but I've always thought, like, why does what, the photo exhibitions always have to be in a frame? Because that's not usually how we see them. We see them much more in, like, in a archival fashion. So I was looking, actually thinking a lot about, like, the the just the archival body of all the images in the world, both digital, printed, and so on. So that's kind of where the catalog idea came from. And then um, just this is a little bit theoretical, but I'm um, always very interested in um, post-structuralist thought and uh, what is a signifier. And so that also played a lot into it. So in the when in um, a solo exhibition. There are um, archival photo boxes displayed also within the exhibition. So we can flip through and then I collected just a lot of um, very strange <laughs> images um, from people's personal photographs, uh, crazy stuff, and um, convention images, and so just a, r a wide array, a wide array. So that's how I, the project came to be, yeah. Thank you very much for... Thank you. So these exhibitions can't happen just with myself, with a curator, and Megan, and Cher, and Ali. Like, it's the artists, right? That's who makes this happen. It's not me at all. It has to be the work of amazing artists. And I know there's another person here, Richard. That's you. I believe uh, it would be, I believe everyone would benefit from you speaking about uh, your series house. Okay. If you're okay with this. I'm, I'm, I'll try. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a series I called House. Um, it's, a, it's a series about a, about a shape. Uh, it's about an icon. Um, you take a kid, a uh, kindergartner, and you say, draw me a house. They'll draw a rectangle, they'll put an isosceles triangle on top, and maybe a window and a door or two, and there is your standard house. Um, 
So I've taken that idea and approached any structure I find that resembles that shape. These are not houses, obviously, but they have that shape, that house shape. Um, There's something that I saw creeping up in my, my odd pieces of work that were not getting shown, and then I decided, oh, maybe I need to really actually focus on this. Um, anything else? Thank you. Where are you? I'm going to make you come on deck very soon. You just stay right around here. And I'm so excited that you're here. Yay! I love that. Thank you, artists, for coming again. I like. I couldn't do this without being inspired by your work. Um, okay. These. Everyone, please come up close and look at Diane's work. Do not just walk by. I need you to understand what's happening in these embroidered pictures. So in this series, Diane, uh, I think she's going through Germany and she's looking at the, she's looking at where the wall fell. Um, and she's looking for places uh, where you can't necessarily see it. Oh yeah, I can hear that thunder. That's great, good, good. Um, uh, and, but what she does is like she, she embroiders these photographs and I don't know how she does it so they don't buckle, um, but she does it so carefully and so meticulously um, that they look, they cross over into the pixel world, right? It's like they, uh, they speak to uh, memory and kind of memory loss, but they also speak to um, failing digital files, even though there's so much about craft and, um, and, uh, and needlepoint, uh, but please look closely at these. Okay, I am going to speak about Joanna's work for a second, and then Olivia is going to talk. Great. Um, okay, Joanna Warwick. She has done this project. It's all about the Yellow Book, and the Yellow Book um, outlines 104 cities across the U.S. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's 104 cities where the interstate has been uh, put through different neighborhoods, and so. She is looking at how, um, at those places where the highway has just plowed through and had people move and, uh, you know, gentrification. And so she's, I'm not sure if she's reached all 104 cities, but that's definitely her goal. And so this is in Boyle Heights in, oh gosh, Boyle Heights in LA. And I just, I, I mean, I think it's a striking, visually arresting image, um, especially thinking about uh, the man-made and, uh, and nature here, right? Um, it makes me think about place and what happens when, um, when perhaps the goals of your community are not being recognized by the federal government, right? And like how, how life is impacted by these things that uh, the government thinks maybe are better, but however, it tears apart a community. Olivia. Will you come talk about your work? Um, I'm really excited to have you here. I've seen your work in a couple of different um, uh, juried things that I've done, and so thank you. Thank you, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me talk about my work. It's crazy that this is from Boyle Heights, because this is from El Sereno in Los Angeles, so it's like neighboring um, neighborhoods. So this work that I created, these two specific images were taken in El Sereno in East Los Angeles where I was born and raised and also where my grandmother is from. Um, she I'm, she uh, migrated here from Mexico back in the 60s and so her neighborhood, um, her house, the locations that we would always go to when we were kids were very prominent to me growing up. The image on the left hand side is called New Neighbors and the reason why is because when um, growing up in my grandmother's neighborhood, we would know neighbors like Lupita down the street or you know the family with 10 kids that we would always play with in the neighborhood, but the neighbors next door, we would never, my grandmother never spoke to them, never talked to them, and it was just something that was normal. We just weren't familiar with them. But um, one day when we were all with my grandmother at her house, someone knocks on the door and we were like, oh, who is that? My grandma said, oh, it's the neighbors from right across the street, right next door, and we were just so surprised. We were like, did something happen? What's going on? And they knock on the door, and it's the, this couple, and they're British, 
And um, a little context, the neighborhood that my grandmother resided in, there was just um, Asian American and Asian Hispanic um, black families that lived there. And a British couple knocks on the door and we were just like, who are, who are these people? What's going on? Um, we just, we had no idea who these people were. And so, um, but my grandma was very sweet. She welcomed them in. They would come and give her food. They would make her food for her, which was really sweet. So, but um, just thinking about that and the place where we grew up, um, even the fact that there's no gates on the windows is very different. If you go through LA, you see a lot of um, metal gates on the windows. So just thinking about like that new neighbors, that there's always someone new coming in, especially now and um, post COVID, all the gentrification that's happened. Um, and then this image is from Cesar Chavez Avenue. Um, and just the changing landscape too as well. The neighborhood has stayed pretty much the same and sometimes there would be different paint on the buildings. You could see it's kind of caked on here, but it would relatively be the same, but the billboard is always changing and so it's showing the way the infiltration of all of these new things that are coming in. Um, and then, are there any other California transplants here? Because <laughs> I feel like we're talking about California a lot. Um, great, awesome. So this book here, Mi Corazón No Está Lejos de Tuyo, is a book translation in Spanish from um, My Heart Is Not Far From Yours, and um, I've lived in Texas for about 10 years now, which is crazy, um, but it is what it is. And so I photographed places around Texas that reminded me of home, um, reminded me of being in LA and the culture and everything there. So there's San Antonio, um, Austin, Houston, and Dallas in there too as well. Yeah, thank you, of course. I know that um, uh, for me, it's really special to be able to hear from the artists themselves. That's who, yeah, thank you, thank you. And I know Kendall is here also. We'll t get to you in a second, don't worry. Uh, is, are there any other artists here that, uh, other, I know Anna, yes, oh my God, yes. Any others? Kendall, no, who? What? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know, okay. Um, let's talk briefly about Elizabeth Bailey. And this one, wow. Um, okay, Elizabeth Bailey and this idea of home. These two photographs uh, were made at her next door neighbor's house. So you know how you think you know your neighbors, right? Like maybe she, she lived next to this older woman for 17 years. And you know, they would like do small talk and chit chat and blah, blah, blah. And then one day um, she uh, realized she hadn't seen her in a week. This woman lived by herself and no one was going in or out, and so she got nervous and called the police to find out um, if everything was okay to do a safe home check. Um, and so when they went in, they found that she had passed away um, and had no relatives, and what she found inside the home was not at all what she expected. It was somewhat of a hoarding situation, and there was uh, food everywhere, dust everywhere, just the whole thing, and just she wasn't, she didn't expect that. She didn't know that that's what this woman's life was like, and it just makes you realize um, you can't know, right? You don't know. Uh, what you see on the outside doesn't necessarily come out, um, and she watched as the city had to then come and empty out the home and put the house up for auction, and she went in there and took photographs of things that she found before it was completely cleared out. Um, and so this is her view. I think she's like 18 feet away uh, from uh, her own house, or eight feet away, excuse me. Um, and so thinking about how you can be so close to somebody yet really not know at all what they're going through or their emotional state or, or anything. Um, and just this beautiful still life and thinking about home and what you know, what this woman was drinking for tea. She was an older woman and she uh, kept all these journals and so she actually ended up reading some of this material because it was gonna go in the dumpster and then it did, I think a week later. Um, and so, I don't know, I don't know about you, but whenever I go to estate sales, I like start, get, I get really upset thinking about them and like what happens, so this just gave me all the feels. Um, 
Megan Jacobs, you can't appreciate this like Diane Myers unless you come in close, okay? There are hundreds of pinpricks all over her face. It looks like the universe, the constellations, right? It's almost like this uh, beautiful starlit, uh, starlit scene over her face. And what it relates to is motherhood and how many days she's been a mother. Um, I don't know the math on me, but I guess I've been a mother now for nine years. And I feel it in my skin. <laughs> I feel it like everywhere it's a part of who I've become um, and for Megan she she shows that uh, in a different way she marks time through the pinpricks on her on her face she's also thinking about climate change I believe she lives in New Mexico and thinking about the wildfires there um, and the the health for her children in breathing in smoke all the time and what does that do and so this as Megan uh, so nicely alluded to, there's something about motherhood and caregiving um, that's, that's present in these works. Yeah, that one is so beautiful. Please, like, that one rewards close looking. Yes? Okay, so a couple of these artists I've seen in uh, portfolio reviews. So when I saw this image, like I had seen this, um, she had showed it to me a year ago, maybe, but I didn't, I didn't know what it would actually look like. She showed me, she like held it up to the light like this, and she was like, can you, can you get under here? And I was like, okay, we're gonna try. And she like showed it, and, the, and I could see the sparkle and the glitter and what happens. And so I knew the, the story, but sometimes like you don't know what's gonna happen. And like particularly when I um, am looking at online submissions, what's really hard is looking at collage work right? Because you never know if you're going to get things with pieces falling off. You don't know if it's of a picture of a collage, right? A, a photo montage. You don't know. And so, yeah, you really don't. Uh, but I did know, um, I had seen, I think, an install shot also of this one. <laughs> Catherine's work. Um, and I hope, is everyone okay? Are you, are you bored? What's going on? You're feeling okay, right? Anybody have any questions? No? No? Okay. Catherine Rodriguez. Um, she grew up with a, I think her dad was a professor of Portuguese literature or Portuguese language, and they moved around. She lived in Portugal. She lived in Brazil. Um, and they had kind of an itinerant life. Um, and she was grappling in this body of work with becoming a caregiver, becoming a mother, and actually setting down roots, because that's not what her life was like growing up. They moved every couple years, and she did have a sister, um, but it was about trying to come to terms with what life is like in suburbia. She, she just, it was, felt weird to her, right, to try to, um, to call it home and to know that she was going to stay there. And so she did um, the series of self-portraits, What About My Dreams? Because she's grappling with what it means to take care of someone and to put perhaps their own, her own dreams aside while she, you know, focuses on another person. Um, and so there's, this is this beautiful um, scene where the, her hair comes out of the corner, right? Um, and then here, this is almost like a Hank Wessel photograph um, of an of a oddly pruned um, bush that she then is hugging. Um, so they're quirky, they're funny, um, but they also speak to, sometimes you go a little crazy, maybe if all you're, you know, doing, and, and I'm speaking from experience, if maybe I've just talked to my four-year-old for, you know, 48 hours, if my other part of my family is out of town, like, I go a little kooky, um, and that's fine. Um, but she plays, I think, with the camera in a way that's really interesting. Kendall. Come, tell us about your work, please. Uh, so, my name is Kendall Gillon. Ooh, I'm a little nervous. Uh, this is from a series called Givens, which is uh, historically, uh, excuse me, Ooh, I'm nervous. Uh, so this series is from, from Givens Park, which is a park in East Austin. 
East Austin is undergoing, going, oh, these guys are intimidating. Uh, okay. So, uh, East Austin is traditionally uh, black and brown neighborhoods. So Austin is going, undergoing hyper gentrification and Gibbons Park is a uh, historical landmark. So uh, developers can't come in and gentrify this area. So uh, the black community of Austin, uh, also people who live outside of Austin, come in on Sundays and gather in Gibbons Park uh, to just build community. So a lot of my work uh, surrounds community, community documentarian. Uh, and so, although I'm not from East Austin, my connection to East Austin is uh, Houston Tillerson University, which is an HBCU in East Austin. That's where I got my undergrad. So I'm really fond of like uh, the community that's still connected through Gibbons Park and through Houston Tillerson, and is still coming back into Austin and to uh, enjoy community. Just a question to Megan, where are you? Where are you? Where did she, where, oh, there you are. Are you gonna speak about your work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to speak about your work. Yeah, yeah, we do. Because, right, when the artist is here, what do we wanna hear from? We wanna hear from the artist, and it's really, congratulations on such a beautiful show. How do I, is it, can, yeah? I've got another mic in the other gallery, so if we wanted to go over there, we can continue the talk on the other side. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 